guitar players of YouTube. It's Nate from GuitarLessons.com here. And over the past couple months, I've uh, released a couple of videos to help build your chord library. The name of the first one, I think, was something like uh, 20 Guitar Chords You Must Know. And the next one was uh, 20 Chords Every Intermediate Guitar Player Should Know. And that's great. Building a chord library is awesome. But what do you do with all these chords once you have them down? And how do you make awesome songs with them? That is the point of this video. And what better way to kind of learn how to use chords than to take a look at some of the greatest songs of all time. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And the idea here is to kind of memorize or categorize or build a Rolodex of the way these chords sound in your head. So whenever you want to hear one of these chords in your writing, you can just pull it up and you'll know exactly what chord you want. Okay, the first thing we need to get into is just the use of diatonic chords. And if you don't know what that means, it's just naturally occurring chords in a given major key. So if you're in the key of C major, or any major key for that matter, you have seven notes to choose from for your basic options. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In this case, it'd be C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. Now, the first, fourth, and fifth notes always have major chords that go along with them. So in the key of C, you'd have C, F, and G major that you can choose from. And then the second, third, and sixth chords that you have in that C major scale naturally have minor chords that go along with them. So you could have D minor, E minor, and then the six would be A minor. Those are your basic options when you're you know, writing music if you want to stick to diatonic or naturally occurring uh, chords. And uh, a couple of really good examples of this that are very practical for you to help drive this point home are, have you ever seen The Rain by CCR? The chord starts out on an F. And those are pretty much the only chords used in that entire course, not the entire song. Uh, but there were F, G, C, and A minor. And if you think about that in the key of C, think about what were the one, four, and five, the major chords that you can use there. There were C was the one, F was the four, and G was the five. So we use those in that progression. So that makes sense. It kind of fits that uh, in the box kind of formula for what chords you can use in a major key. We also use that A minor which also fits the formula because that's the sixth chord and it's minor. Another really good example of this is the song Let It Be by the Beatles. And the chords in this song uh, for the verse are C, G, A minor, and F, C, G, F, and back to C. And that kind of fits the same formula, exact same four chords. So. You're probably kind of getting the idea that some of the most common chords used in pop music are the one, the four, the five, and the six. So that's something you're going to want to drill over time in different keys to know what the one, four, five, and six is in each key. But sometimes you do use the two and three, that minor two and three, and I have a couple of good examples of those too. The Ed Sheeran song, uh, Thinking Out Loud, starts off on a D. It's in the key of D. It goes to D over F sharp, then a G. And an A. And all that is is a 1, 4, 5 progression in the key of D. That's your major chords out of the key of D. D, you have an F sharp, and then you have your 4, the G, and then your A, the 5. But on the pre chorus, people fall in love in mysterious ways. It's pretty high. But it goes to an E minor, which is the 2 chord. If you look at the second note in a D minor, or sorry, D major scale, it's an E minor. And that's a really good example of how to use the two chord in the context of a song. And it's a really good idea to kind of file that away, the sound of that song, so you can pull it up whenever you want to express that emotion of that two chord in a song. A really good example of using the three chord, the diatonic three chord, is uh, the Journey song, Don't Stop Believing." So, don't stop believing. Okay, so there you just have, in the key of E, you have a 1, an E, a 5, a B, a 6, C sharp minor, and then an A for the 4. But the second phrase of this chorus is, Street lights, people. Right there it goes to a G sharp minor, the 3 chord in the key of E major. So, 5, Three, four. So that's kind of a good reference for what the three chord sounds like in a diatonic chord progression. 
All right, moving on to sus chords. How do you use those guys? Sus two and sus four chords. Uh, probably the two biggest songs I think about when I think of sus chords are Pinball Wizard and Free Falling by Tom Petty. But uh, Pinball Wizard is pretty straightforward. It's just a bunch of sus four chords with a bar chord shape moved down like this. And I'm, I'm not even thinking about theory so much here of what chords occur naturally in the key as much as I am trying to catalog that sound of a sus4 chord away in my head so I can use it when I want. And a really good rule of thumb for sus4 chords is to use them on the one chord or the five chord of the key and handle them with care on the four chord. So for example, if you're in the key of C major, a sus4 chord sounds good on the five, Sounds great. On that four chord though, it might not sound as good. It really depends on what you want to hear, but it's more common to hear them on the one and the five. Another really good example of a sus four chord is just the song Free Fallen by Tom Petty. And there's even a, it's basically going from a one chord, like a D shape, we're playing an F here, to the five chord. And reason a sus4 on both of them, which kind of fits with not the rule, but you know, the tendencies of sus chords to be used on the one and the five. Let's get into some non-diatonic chords or chords that don't necessarily follow whatever key you're in. And probably one of my favorite non-diatonic chords is a flat major seven. Let me just show you what that means. I'm in the key of C major. A flat major seven would be, instead of having the seven right below like a B, I would flat that or lower it by one half step. That would be a B flat note, and then I'll just play a major chord there. So if C is your root note, B flat would be the flat major seven. And one of my greatest or favorite examples of a song that uses this chord progression is Somebody to Love by the Blues Brothers. And that's kind of the perfect example because blues music uses that lowered major seventh a lot. And you know, Blues Brothers, it doesn't get a whole lot bluesier than that as far as kind of the bluesy R&B thing. And you can think about this as modal borrowing from the Mixolydian scale, or you can think about it as just modifying one of the chords in the key already. But the important thing is, you know, not that you know all the theory behind it. The important thing is that you know the sound. Another example of this flat seven major chord uh, is actually, this is a really good example because the Rock music has its roots in the blues, right? And the song American Idiot by Green Day is a really good example of this. So if we're in the key, uh, let's say G sharp. Don't wanna be an American idiot. That is the main riff there, or the main chords. So we just have the one chord, the four, the flat seven major, and then back to the one. So. So that's that riff for that. It's a really good kind of way to remember what that flat seven sounds like. Another great non-diatonic chord is a minor four chord. And another really great example of this comes from the same band, two Green Dane songs in a row, Wake Me Up When September Ends. If it's in the key of G major, so the four chord in the key of G major is a C. So all you'd have to do is put a C minor in that place. So. Wake me up when September ends. So that is a really good reference to learn how a minor four chord sounds in the context of a song. Another super common non-diatonic chord that you're going to see is a major two chord. And this is kind of a momentary modulation into a different key. Don't worry about that. Just try to remember what it sounds like. And this is used a lot in folk and bluegrass music, even country a lot too. So from the key of G major. Major two. So going from that G to the A major to a D is a really common move in the key of G major because you get that major two, which is just the five of D. Don't worry about that if you don't know what it means. Just memorize that major two going to a five sound. The next and final category of chords I want to go over with you is just seventh chords. And I kind of clump all these together because I wanted to give you a really good overview of how to start using seventh chords in your playing. And just while we had 
like we had some rules about what chords are major and minor in a major key, and you can have kind of the same rules for which chords are major seventh, minor seventh, or dominant seventh in a major key. And it's a little bit different here, but if you're in the key, let's say you're in the key of G major, the first and fourth notes of a G major scale can have major seventh chords associated with them. So a G major seven and a C major seven are like your starting basic choices. And then a five chord is still major, but it's a dominant seven. And then for the two, three, and six, you can just have minor seven. So A minor seven, B minor seven, and E minor seven. And the seventh chord is just a half diminished or minor seven flat five. But that's the basic principle you need for starting to be able to use seventh chords and starting to get familiar with the sound of them. And one of the best ways to get good at using seventh chords is to just pull up some really simple jazz standards. And the best chord progression, of course, to get used to these with is the 2 5 1. So you can pull up a song like Autumn Leaves and just start playing with that. And this one is great because it starts off right with the 2 5 1. So what's the two in the key of G major? It's an A minor, right? A minor 7. And then a D7 is the 5. And the 1 is the G major 7. So that starts off right away with a 2 5 1 in the key of G major. The next chord is a C major 7, the 4. Then after that, you have F sharp minor 7 flat 5, the 7 chord, and then a B7, which is a momentary modulation or to the key pretty much of E, harmonic minor there. But that's a really good one to start out with. Another really great example of how to use 7 chords or another great jazz standard to work on is How High the Moon. And this one starts off kind of tricky. Starts off on a G major 7, so you would think you're in the key of G major 7, and you are kind of for the first two measures. But then it goes to a G minor and then a C7, and then an F major 7. So what's going on here? So G major, and then it goes to that G minor. Well, we know that the 2 is a minor, and a 2 5 1 is really common in jazz. So I'm suspicious that this is a 2. And then we go to a dominant 7 chord, which is probably a 5, because it's the dominant 7 chord, and then a major 7. So that kind of fits the formula and lets me know that we probably modulated to the key of F major. And the key to understanding when you modulated somewhere, or one of the really common keys, is the dominant seventh chord. Anytime you see a dominant seventh chord, that's probably telling you that you're gonna resolve to the one chord of whatever key you've modulated in. So it goes from that G minor seven to a C dominant seven to an F major seven, which fits a two, five, one in the key of F perfectly. Very cool, so really good way to get good at seventh chords and knowing exactly what key and it's just going through jazz standards. The next little uh, few measures of this song modulates again. We have an F minor seven to a B seven, B dominant seven, which is our key, right? To knowing when we modulated, and then an E flat major seven. So that dominant seven, B flat dominant seven is the five of the one, E flat major. And you don't have to know all this. The important thing is that you get familiar with the sound of your minor sevenths, dominant sevenths and major sevenths and know how they're used in a basic context of a major key so you can pull them up whenever you want to hear that sound. And one way that you can kind of tell that a modulation is happening is just really listen to where the tonal center is. And like, for example, this sounds very consonant, like you're in the same universe, but as soon as you hit that F minor seven to the B flat seven to the E flat seven, it's like you just shift it over into like another state or another universe or another world as far as what key you're in. So that's one thing that if you train your ear and actually start playing some jazz standards, you'll be able to hear when a song does that. So the seven chords things that we covered here might be a little bit difficult for some of you out there and a little bit foreign and like, I don't know exactly what I'm doing here, but that's good, that's really good. That means you're actually pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and learning new things. So just follow that. And if it's sound that you wanna develop, dig into it even more. So those are just some insights into um, how to start adding the sounds of certain chords in to the Rolodex of your memory so you can pull them up whenever you want to hear a specific sound in your playing. You know, if you're at the stage where you're just learning your diatonic open chords, then just try some of the pop songs we went over in this lesson with that. If you're at the spot where you want to get into seventh chords and jazz standards, start pulling up jazz standards and just working your way through them. So let me know in the comments below what are some of your favorite chords and chord progressions. You never know what comment might inspire that spark of creativity in someone else here. See you later.